Well, hello, and welcome back to The Road to Success. My name is Aaron Peterson, I'll be your host, and this is Landstar's podcast dedicated to small business owners in the freight industry. Now, I know it's been a while since we've had an episode, but as I'm sure everyone listening will agree, it has been a year. And in fact, that's what we're going to address in this upcoming series we're doing this past year, and how we're going to do business going forward to the future. So what we've got over the next couple of weeks is we're going to release four episodes. That's right. We're not coming back with one. We're coming back with four episodes of the Road to Success podcast about the pandemic pivot, where I talk to Landstar business owners, independent agents and owner operators or business capacity owners, BCOs as we call them, who are navigating shifts in the business environment alongside their customers changing businesses. Everybody is having to adapt and address new ways of doing things. And that's what we want to talk about. How are you changing your business to meet current and future demands? And I want to get right into this now. Keep in mind, it's going to be four episodes. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. So you are notified as soon as the next episode hits so you can hear all of this four-part series. First up for this episode is Landstar Independent Owner Operator, James Morris. He's also a fleet owner. Now, James joined the network in 2016, and like many other independent business owners or business capacity owners, BCOs, I just want to make sure you're familiar with that term because we use it quite a bit here. James made changes during this year, the coronavirus pandemic, and took a closer look at everything involved with his business in 2020. Let's find out how these entrepreneurs have kept their independent businesses moving despite the challenges of so much uncertainty. This is my interview with Landstar owner-operator, James Morris. How's everything going? Where are you at today? Currently in East Texas, almost Louisiana. Where are you headed? Uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Then uh, I take the weekend off so that me and my wife can go run an insane mountain up in uh, Georgia. Oh, that's right. You you run a lot. Where where? How far are you going? It's three and a half mil miles straight uphill on a trail with anywhere from six to seven and a half percent grade. Then we're going across the TVD or the Appalachian Trail for about another five miles. And then you have to come back. Yeah. That's a heck of an accomplishment. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I am here with James Morris. And James, before we get into what we're going to talk about with how you've handled business in 2020, I do got to ask, how did you end up getting into transportation? Uh, Prior service time, when I got out of the military, I was a prison guard, maximum security for a number of years. And... It just wasn't my lifestyle being locked inside them walls all the time. I like to get out and see things and talk to new people every day. And it was just the best opportunity in the area at the time. And 30 years ago, here I am today. How long, how long were you a prison guard for? About five and a half years. Did you ever have anybody escape? No. I was on the SWAT team, attended a few <laughs> riots, I guess would be the proper term. <laughs> I watch too much TV. It just it seems really easy on TV. Yep. Hollywood. How have you managed your business differently in in 2020 specifically like what have you done differently than you normally would in any other given year you've been doing this i would have to say a greater attention to details it's the small details you get a phone service you tend to keep it for 10 15 years you never really consider other options or better plans or lower pricings it's the, the devil you know instead of the one you don't even if you contact your current provider you can sometimes get better deals, switch it to a business account or back to a personal account, vice versa. It's the small things that add up at the end of the year. You can't make all your money at once. You can't save all your money at once. So I was reviewing everything business-wise, insurances, phone plans, uh, vehicle collision insurances, health insurance, everything I could almost on a, on a bi-monthly basis just to see what I could do better, more efficiently. Now, did you find immediate discounts, or it was this one one of those things that was gradual as the year went on? It got better and better, or you saw more and more companies offering more more things. How did that work? There are more companies offering more deals. Uh, there's been a lot of mergers here lately, Sprint and uh, T-Mobile for one, so that kind of affected one phone plan. The discounts, some of them are really hard to find, so you got to do some research. Uh, LCAP makes that really easy on a lot of things. Hey. Uh, I love that program. Thank you. T- you've talked a little bit about how the discounts have changed and how you, you've you taken an assertive approach to making sure that you're on top of all the discounts you can be on top of. How has your actual business of hauling freight changed? Is it different how you relate to customers? Is it different how you actually plan a route? Because you know some states have more closures than other ones. I mean, how has any of that changed? 
that has changed a good bit. I use Google more, and I will avoid certain areas because of what's going there. The as far as the trucking part of it goes, we're we're fairly diverse because it's my wife and I. She does vans, and I do flatbed step deck. Mm -hmm. So we're already rather diverse in that nature. I did, on my end, um, push the limit as far as getting to the next level. When I got my my approval to go to the SD3 to SD4, the first thing I did was hunt every load at that current rating to make sure that I, I could maximize. Okay, so you're optimizing your freight opportunities. Yes, I am. And And how has business for you... Or as far as you've seen it, because what you're dealing with is step deck, um, or in flatbed, step deck, freight. How has that changed throughout this year? Because this year has been very trying in many capacities. You know, we've we've talked to agents and their business has changed because they're more remote and whatnot. But your business does not, you're not more remote. You're still doing basically the same job. How has that changed for you throughout the year? Has the freight gotten better? Are customers kind of restricting how you coming into a yard, for example? I mean, how are those restrictions applying to your business? There was the big dip early part of the year toward the end of the first quarter, beginning of the second. The cost of fuel dropped down. That made me reanalyze my cost per mile and allow me to lower my rate so I could maintain. Mm -hmm. I have put on a bigger hustle. A lot of flatbed and open deck freight, you're waiting on a crane or... You're waiting on a, a rented forklift to show up. So sometimes the scheduling is really odd compared to dry vans where the, that building don't move. You back up to it, you're unloaded. I wouldn't say that I've taken extravagant risks as far as planning a load to pick up on the same day I deliver one. I do coordinate with both agents and let them know. I, I deliver your load at 8 a.m. in the morning, and I do plan on picking one up at 4 p.m. this afternoon and coordinate that days in advance. And that way I can keep running instead of having that one night layover in between each load. So I have been pushing and attempting to get more gross revenue going that way. Do you see business continuing to change in the near future? I mean, the, what you're seeing out there, do you feel like it's still evolving? It still doesn't feel like what it used to be. And so it's kind of changing course a little bit? Oh, definitely. It's going to be evolving. Anything that's stagnant dies. Everything must continue to evolve. And the new hours of service as a reference has has already become a beneficial effect for me. I'm, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm very pleased with this. Uh, customer relations, due to restrictions, pulling into a yard, there's a table outside now. We understand these are the times. It makes it somewhat more simplistic in a way, though. Uh, there's no more, everybody sit here and huddle. Let's get out there, get you out of here, and... That's helpful in its own way. So there are two evolutions that I've noticed immediately. How do you plan for these changes that you don't even know exactly what the changes will be? How do you as an owner-operator plan for that future? This is my favorite question, actually. Oh, sweet. <laughs> A Zen philosophy is don't be the rock in the middle of the stream because you'll get worn down and turned into a pebble or sand. Be the water. You flow around everything. Water can be hard when it needs to be. You can be an ice, solid as it is a rock. You can be as light as vapor and be a cloud and float above all of it. Using the, the Zen philosophy, I can stroll into an area relaxed and accept what is there. Because you're going to North Dakota, yes, that's a traditional black hole for freight. But keep your eyes open. Do your due diligence. Contact those agents up in that area. Even the lane match can be your friend. Utilize every aspect that's given to you and you'll come out with something. It may not be exactly what you want, but your end goal is what you want to make another dollar revenue. That's sage advice. Be the water. I'm going to get that on a t-shirt, by the way. I think that's great. You should copyright it. What <laughs> right. I think somebody beat me. <laughs> How has what you haul changed? In terms of what you were hauling, has that changed because of this year? I mean, you talked about a little bit about changing your trailer type, but has that, what you actually plan to haul with that step deck, has that actually changed because of this year? Yes, it has. I uh, upgraded my license plate to the heavy haul side. Originally, I wasn't going to do the super heavy loads, a little more wear and tear on the truck, 
but now I'm looking into a triad 53 foot ultra low pro step deck with ramps. It'll broaden my opportunities using care and caution and not being a shotgun driver. You know, I won't tear my truck apart. So that has changed already. Um, and as far as flatbed freight, there's really no major changes. We haul the building blocks of America. And so we're still hauling them just in bigger chunks now. <laughs> mm. are, are there certain places where you're, you're not going as much or you're, be, or you're doing less of freight from place, certain places because of the, the stress of this year? No, I try to take uh, all opportunities. A lot of drivers won't go to California. Every time I go there, I end up with a really nice load coming out. A lot of people won't go to the Northeast. As long as the customer is willing to break out the plus cost for tolls and et cetera, I don't have a problem going there. Uh, sometimes I have to buy extra permits. My wheelbase is a little longer than some, but that's averaged into the total deal. It's a negotiation. One of the biggest tools we have here at Landstar, you can negotiate rates. You can no negotiate who's paying for what. And it's the same way El Cap helps up, negotiate deals. We can also negotiate our own. So do you think that that helps you have a business that's kind of set to ride out uncertainty? The flexibility is what allows us to deal with the uncertainty. If you're going to be rigid, I only want to run loads that are under 20,000 pounds. You've, you've just deleted 70% of the market. You may not want to run those heavier loads. Well, it costs me a little more fuel, but I'm still running more freight. You may not want to step into a new avenue of customers. I don't do the Northeast. Well, the trucks that are not legal for California due to the uh, emissions issue, that's slightly different. But they knew this going in. You have to be flexible as far as what you will and what you say you won't do. Eventually, you will have to do something you really don't want to. Mm -hmm. However, if you make it profitable for yourself and your business and maintain your sanity and be flexible, let it go and do what you do. Are you finding out that during during this year, business relationships you've had established from the past have really helped you basically tackle 2020 head on? Oh, immensely. I attended the one and only BCO event in Fort Worth this year. Made a point to hunt down a couple of the agents that were I knew were going to be there, particular to step deck and flatbed loading. Made sure to make face contact, firm handshakes, the whole nine yards, and did the follow-up phone calls. Without these relationships, you're just another number. You're the blue truck instead of the green truck. But once you establish that relationship, you walk in, you, you call the person by name, and they know your name, and it gives you a ground to start on a good foot. The relationships I had before, I have attempted to strengthen. I've actually prepared a sheet that I would send out on a, an email saying, you know, this is the equipment I have. These are the capabilities I'm possible of. I know I'm not in your area this week, but I may be there Tuesday. So take a look at what I got to offer you and see if you can match me a load that would help. And this gives the, the agent time and gives me the opportunity to you know, peacock myself a little bit and say, hey, here's my fancy feathers. Let's do, let's do some work. That's interesting. So, you know, you mentioned handshakes, which is, I mean, can you believe it was only March <laughs> that we were still doing handshakes? <laughs> and now it's against the rules, I think. But how, how have you evolved in terms of those networking and business relationships you talked about? Because you can't just go up and do the handshake deal anymore. You know, and it's a, it's a much different social interaction. This is true. The world's gone more digital over the years as it is. FaceTime never existed when we were younger. Didn't exist a couple of years ago, for that matter. And utilizing all these different networks, LinkedIn, Facebook, the various safety calls that we do here in the BCO town halls, if you listen closely, you also learn names in the middle of it. And that's what you need to pay attention to is all the little details again. I picked up of different agents' names from a Facebook post, and I just wrote them down in my little notebook. Hey, Agent ABC actually does flatbed freight out of Maryland that I never knew about for whatever reason. And I'll make a cold call, and it's, it's a digital cold call, but that's our electronic handshake, I guess you would say, these days. That's a good way to put it. So let me ask you, in terms of uh, technology, you know, what, what kind of support or technology do you use for your business now, and, and how does that benefit you? The camera systems that I purchased through LCAP, 
I'm thoroughly enjoying those. They're like an additional insurance, if you ask me. Uh, camera facing forward, two down each side of the vehicle, showing the nice view there. I use a phone and a tablet and a computer to make sure I'm, I'm linked into every aspect that I can be when I'm not driving, of course. Reading all the various articles about fuels and which ones work better and tires and which ones give you the better rolling ratio, depending on your, your use. Excellent. So what have you done differently to support the customers during this time? I mean, how are you doing things differently? Patience and politeness to the extreme. Mm. Our current times, they're nothing either one of us have created, probably neither one of us care for. But we have to maintain our uh, community standards of being social. Always be polite. I always smile. I'm always properly dressed in what I consider traditional old school trucker. I wear my boots, my jeans, a my shirt's tucked in when I go to a customer. And if something's beyond our control, there's nothing that yelling at him or her is going to help me or vice versa. Mm -hmm. If a customer is slightly irate, I just smile and polite. Assisting the customers in a more direct manner, offering them the best service through having equipment that the other driver does not have. I have a small toolbox that I carry on the trailer. And it has extra edge protectors. It has more rubber stops. I got wheel chocks and little deck screws that I could drill pieces of board into the deck to prevent sliding. And not everybody carries all this. But it's just the minor things that will make that customer remember. Our safety starts when we turn the key on in the morning before we even get to the customer to pick up their load. And it continues for every step of our day. Even when we're parked, we have to make sure we're safe. Mm -hmm. So I'm a firm believer in the safety, and as, as, as Landstar is as well, much appreciated. Here's my last question for you, okay? What business advice do you have for independent owner-operators in this current environment when the business environment is so uncertain and we don't know, you know, it, it, every week is different at this point? What's your advice? Biggest two things I would advise, read more, watch TV less. Hmm. Read the industry news, transport topics. A trucker's News, the one that looks like a newspaper at the truck stops, that one seems to be fairly informative rather than just a recruiting book. Go to all your websites, the manufacturer of your tires, the manufacturer of your truck. Learn more about your truck, and don't be afraid to experiment on it. I carry a grease gun. It saves me $37 a month, but at the end of 10 years, that's going to be a respectable amount of money to grease my own truck. Change your own windshield wipers. Don't be afraid to step up on that tire and, and reach over there and undo that little screw and fix it. Don't pay somebody 20 bucks. And always reanalyze your business itself once a quarter. Last quarter you owed for even easy conversation numbers, $100,000 on your truck. The second quarter, you only owed 82000 on your truck. Change your insurance rates, your coverages, so that it matches what you actually owe and bring your premiums down. Anything you can do to save a dollar today is another payment in something else better in life. Always read, always research, and remember to be the water. Flow with what goes. If you try to fight upstream, it's going to be a long, hard, stressful battle, and those of us that are paddling downstream are going to be at the finish line waiting for you. Thank you so much for that, James. Now, our next episode, we will hear from a couple that owns and operates a Landstar Freight Agency. But who... Uh... Who hasn't heard of a Zoom meeting at this point in time? It seems like we're meeting more and more on the Zoom forum or Google Meet. So uh, sometimes it seems like we're having more meetings than we have yeah, before. Yeah, I, I might say that as actually maybe a positive. But there's seemingly more meetings now with customers uh, than there was before because it's easier. There's no travel. There's Everyone just has to chisel out 10 minutes in their day and send out an invite and, and your meeting in person, uh, almost. As electronically. Zoom, electronically in person. That's right. We've got teases on this podcast. And I hope you guys are excited. We're really, really happy to be back. And again, apologies for the long delay. It's been a crazy year. We're all adjusting and we're all doing everything we can to keep business moving forward. Thank you so much for listening to the Road to Success podcast. Be sure to keep reading our Road to Success magazine. More episodes will be coming your way soon. In fact, very soon. So be sure you hit subscribe. So you're the first to get the next episode, as well as find Landstar social media pages and be sure to follow those. Share this episode with your friends. Always use the hashtag road to success 
and tell us where in the country you're listening from. Thank you guys. I am out of here. I will be back very soon with part two in our series. And no matter what end of the trucking business you fall into, always remember that safety comes first. Music